Spinning Tops A simple, yet fascinating toy. The origins of the spinning top are also quite fascinating. No one knows exactly when or where the spinning top originated, but the origins have been speculated in several publications. In his book, Douglas Gould suggests that early versions of the spinning top could have been inspired by people watching maple leaves spiral into the ground or playing with rounded rocks. Later, the invention of the firebow would show the world how applying tension to a string could get a shaft rotating quickly. This would lead to a more modern version of the top, where a string is used to accelerate the top to higher speeds. From there, simple challenges arise, such as who can spin the top for the longest. Battle tops? Balancing tops? To more advanced challenges, like the World Spin Top Contest. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can design your own top using a few simple tools in Fusion 360. I'll be showing you how you can convert simple drawings like these into unique symmetrical geometries, perfect for spinning tops. To get started, select the Sketch tool and choose a sketch plane. Next, press the L key to activate the Line tool. We're going to create one line going down from the origin and one line going to the right of the origin. The line going down determines how tall the top will be the line going to the right will be half the final diameter. I like to add a small radius on the bottom. To do this, press C to activate the circle tool, select a point on the center line, and end the circle on the bottom of the center line. Next, the goal is to create a closed surface between the line on the right and the bottom radius. In this top, I'll use the line tool to draw a diamond-like shape, ending the last line tangent to the bottom circle. The blue highlighting on the inside of the shape indicates that this is now a closed surface. Click Finish Sketch, then select the Revolve tool. Select your closed surfaces, then choose the center line as your revolve axis. Next we're going to be creating the slot for the spindle. To do this, I'm going to create another sketch on this top surface. Next I'm going to create a circle at the origin with a diameter of 10.3mm. I'm then going to create three vertical lines inside of this circle, two on the edges, and one going from the origin to the top of the circle. I make the center line a construction line, and then I use the symmetry tool by first selecting the outer two lines and then selecting the inner line. I set the distance between these lines to be 8.3 millimeters, and then I click Finish Sketch. I then select the Extrude tool and select the center part of the circle and one of the rounded parts of the circle. I then set the extrude distance to minus 30 millimeters to cut into the part. And with that we're done. This slot was designed to fit a spindle, which I'll be providing links to in the video description. The link will take you to the Thingiverse page for this project, where you can download the spindle, launcher, and bushings to go along with it. The bushing is a small, replaceable part that can be press fit into the launcher. This part was designed to be replaced if it sustained damage during operation. After printing, the spindle can be inserted into the slot we designed earlier for it. The bushings are pressed into the top and bottom of the launcher. I found that a little bit of hot glue helps keep them in place on more aggressive spins. To load the top, insert a small nylon string into the hole on the spindle. Begin gently rotating the top until you feel some tension on the string. Then you can rotate the top more quickly, loading as much string as you'd like onto the launcher. When you're ready to launch, place the tip on the ground and pull firmly on the string. Try experimenting with different profiles and see what kind of tops they make. Try creating your own and remixing this design on Thingiverse. 